Have you ever wondered what the include audio tales checkbox in the bounce dialog is all about? What about a quick way to normalize or gain stage all the tracks or regions in your project at once? Well, today on Facts and Logic, we're going to answer those questions and more, including a look at how I use reference tracks in my project when mixing and a follow up on a quick way to adjust the parameters and plugins that move in extremely small increments. What's going on, voiceover warriors and keyboard ninjas? This is the Aurea Monster welcoming you back to Logic.Band, a site full of tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you as a blind Logic, voiceover, macOS, and GarageBand user. If you haven't yet, type Logic.Band into your web browser, and when you land on the site, sign up for the mailing list so you can get a free Getting Started with Logic course. All right. Question one. Authentic Thai Records asks, can we access the flex pitch function in Logic? Thank you very much. I hope Google Translate didn't fail us on the translation of the name of your YouTube channel. If that translation is inaccurate, please feel free to let me know in the comments. So to answer your question, yes, there is a way to do it. Someone else did a tutorial on that and there'll be a link to that in the description. Question two. <laughs> Ashley asked, is there a shortcut way to increase and decrease the BPM of the metronome? Cheers. Well, to answer the question, there's no quick way to turn the tempo up or down quickly with a key command. However, there is a quick way to get to the tempo slider in your project, and that's by using item chooser. So if I just hit VOI to bring up item chooser, item chooser menu, 110 items, and start typing tempo, 80, 50, two, one item, 110, tempo slider, and that puts me on a tempo slider. I'm going to VO space, 110, tempo slider, and now I can interact with the slider, in slider, 120, and adjust the 110. tempo. So, that is a quick way to get to the tempo. Just remember, if you do VOI to bring up item chooser, type in tempo, hit return, and VO space on tempo, you will then be able to type in the tempo. Next question. Question three. Paul asked, how do you normalize the level of one track or a selection of tracks from within the project without bouncing? Hey, Paul, you're in luck. There is a quick way to normalize all the tracks and or regions in the project. And what you want to do, select the tracks or regions that you want to normalize. So if you want to normalize all the tracks in the project to the same value, you can just do Command A. Select all. And then the key command you want to use is Control Option G, and that's G as in gain. So if I press that. Normalize gain window. It brings up this dialog box that allows us to normalize the gain of all the regions that are currently selected. So let's go right through here and check this out. Algorithm. Peak. Pop-up button. So we want to normalize to a peak value. You can also do LUFS, L-U-F-S. Menu, too high, loudness. By selecting loudness. So you got peak or loudness. Check mark, peak. So let's leave this on peak for now. Peak, pop target level, minus 1.0, slider. So you can normalize to minus 1.0. If you want to normalize, say everything to, say, minus 10. Minus one, target level, minus 1.0, slider. Can interact with In slider, the slider. Minus 2.0. Minus, 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 minus 6.0, minus 7.0, minus 8, minus 9 points, minus 10.0. Take that down to minus Auto 10. Auto slider. All right, and let's be all right from here. Image. DB. You see, this is minus 10 decibels that we're normalizing to. You see, it says DB right there. Let's continue on. Two regions selected. Cancel button. So we got two regions selected. Apply default button. And we have apply. Apply, apply default button. So I'm just going to view a space on apply. Now in tracks window. Track 47K no tail group. And that's it. Now the tracks will be normalized to whatever the value you have it set. And if you look at the region gain, so I'm going to go say track, for, track, track 47. Hey. Look at the region gain for this first track. Out of tracks, out of, out of track. Inspector, group, in inspector, region, collapse, disclosure, triangle, Let's expanded, expand region, that. hey, no tail, table, note in table, loop, hyphen, hyphen, transpose, fine tune, flex and fault, gain, minus 9.9. .9. This set to minus 9.9 .9 because it had to turn that region down by 9.9 .9 for it to peak at minus 10 dB. So that region was already probably pretty close to minus one. And if you don't have that key command mapped and you're not using Logic Keyboard Ninja key commands, then if you just go to the function menu inside of the tracks toolbar, you'll find a normalize region gain there. Before we get into the next question, I'd like to take a minute to thank Joe and Aiden and everyone else that have been gracious enough to send some value back to Logic.Band in the form of a donation. If you'd love to join them and support what Logic.Band is doing, visit Logic.Band slash support. Once again, that is Logic.Band slash support to make a one-time or ongoing donation. All right, let's get into the next question. Question four. Paul asks, how do you use a reference mix in a project? Thanks. So what Paul is asking about here is when one is mixing a song, they generally want to have a reference mix. This is usually a commercial professional mix that they listen to while mixing as a reference to kind of make sure they're on the right track and moving in the right direction while they're working on a mix. 
And so the way I normally do this is I'll import the song I'm referencing into the project, usually a WAV file, and I will mute the reference track. And then that way, when I solo the reference track, because it's muted, the reference track will be soloed, but all the other tracks in my project will be muted. And that gives me a quick way to listen to the reference track, and then I can unsolo it, and then I can hear the mix I'm working on in Logic again. There's a specific way you gotta set up the project to make that work as well. So I'm gonna step you through that right now. This is a project that's set up the way it would be if I were gonna mix this song. So I'm gonna down arrow and show you what tracks I have here. Track two drums. This is the track stack with all my drums. Track 31 bass. This is one bass track. Track 32 bass. Another bass track. Track 33 intrepid guitar. And a track stack with all my guitars. So you kind of get the idea here. Typical drums, bass, guitars, etc. in this song. Now, the thing that I do, I'm going to jump into the mixer here so you can see this. Now in, now in, intrepid guitar, channel strip groove. All right, so here we are in the mixer. And the thing that I want to show you in the mixer, if I navigate through here, it'll be all right. Reference track, channel strip groove, aux one, channel strip groove, submix, channel strip groove there's this channel strip called submix. And what I did was anything that would normally be routed to stereo output, I routed them to a bus and I named that bus submix. So my drums, guitars, bass are all routed to the submix track instead of the stereo output. And this submix track is where I'm gonna put any bus compression or any limiter or any effects that are normally put on the stereo output track. The reason I do that is because if I put those effects like the limiter and bus compressor and stuff like that on the stereo output track, when I play back the reference track, it will also go through that. But remember, the reference track's already been mastered, it's already been limited, so we don't want to hear the reference track through any effects. So we route all the tracks that would normally go to the stereo output to the submix aux track, and then we leave the reference track routed to the stereo output. So now, if I go back to the track headers, tracks, group, tracks, window. I go down to my reference track here. Track, track 46, reference track, group. So I'm going to mute this track now. Toggle channel strip mute on. And now if I play the project, you're going to hear the song I'm working on. But when I press S to solo, you'll hear the reference track kick in. So I'm going to play the project. Now if I press solo. Toggle channel strip solo on. You'll hear the reference track. The small column is gone. And if I unsolo it, toggle channel strip solo off. I'm back to hearing my projects. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to play the project. I'm going to press S to solo the reference track and then press S again to unsolo it. And you'll see how you can quickly flip back and forth between listening to your mix and the reference track in that regards. And that's kind of how you do it. Now, obviously, I switch them back and forth pretty quickly to make a point there. But generally speaking, you can set a section of the song to cycle and then listen to your mix, listen to your reference track, and cycle between the two. So that's pretty much how you do it. Hope that answered your question. Question 5. Aiden asked, what is the audio tail option found in the bounce dialog? So what Aiden's asking about here is the include audio tail checkbox found in the bounce dialog. So if I do command B to bring up the bounce dialog. Table, uncheck check. I'm gonna navigate over to Start. it. Start, 45, file format, A. Resolution, 24 bit, sample rate, 44,000, file type, interlet, dithering, none. Surround bounce, add to project, add to music, dim end. 6111 image, mode, real time, re offline, so bounce second cycle passed, include audio tail, check, checkbox. Include audio tail, that's the checkbox in question here. So what this means is, if you remember when you're bouncing a file out in Logic, Logic asks you where the bounce should end. If I back up here. Bounce sec, offline, real time mode, 61 end, 61111, scrubber groove. So you see that says this is gonna end at bar 61, beat one, etc. right? So if you have a reverb or delay in the project, the tails of those reverbs or delays can echo on past that endpoint of bar 61. In those cases, you don't want the audio file to be cut off prematurely without the delay tail or the echoes trailing out. So when you have include audio tail check, it will let the tails of any notes, echoes, delays, reverbs, etc. completely ring out first before ending the file. So I got an example here I can show you. I'm gonna close this. Image, okay, default, cancel, button. So I'm back in the project here and we have two tracks in this project. Track 47, hey no tail, groove. 
Track 48, hey tail, group. So I'm gonna go back to the first Track one. Track 47, hey no tail. So this is just me saying the word hey with a reverb on it. And this is the one I bounced out without include audio tail check. Hey! That ends rather abruptly. Now, if I play the next one. Hey! That file ends when the reverb fades out. So I'm gonna play them back to back. Hey! Hey! And there you have it. So that's the difference. You definitely want to leave that checked. I can't imagine a scenario where you wouldn't want to have that include audio tail checkbox checked. So that's it for these questions. But before we get out of here, it's time for a new segment. And this one is called Fact Check. So this is going to be where I follow up on a question I answered previously, whether it be with a comment that someone left regarding the answer or something I forget to include, etc, etc. This time out, we're going to talk about adjusting parameters that move in tiny increments inside of certain plugins. All right, so here I am in the plugin. This is HComp, and I'm going to show you how you can change the parameters. So if I interact with this. In threshold, minus 18.0 decibel slider. That's the threshold parameter if I VO right. Minus 18.0 decibels, slider. And normally what you do is interact with in this. Slider. And if I just press VO right arrow. Minus 18.0 decibels, minus 18. Point zero decibels minus 18.1 decibels minus 18.1 decibels. You see, this is moving in extremely small increments. Now you can press and hold the right arrow and move it along that way. But another thing you can do, I'm going to stop interacting with Auto this. Slider. You don't need to interact with the slider to do this. If you just press VO shift space on it, type in a value and then hit return, it will change to that value. And so far, this has worked in all the third party plugins I've tried that move in small increments like this. So I'm gonna press BO shift space, type in minus one, two, return. Threshold minus 12.0 decibels. Now that is set to minus 12. So once again, if I do BO shift space, minus one, five, period five, return. Threshold minus 15.5 decibels. And now it's set to minus 15.5. Auto ratio 3.00 slider. That ratio is set to three to one. So let's in 3.00 slider. I interacted and moved over would be a right to where it says three to one. So if I VO shift space once and I'm going to type eight colon one return ratio 8.00 slider. And you see, I just set the ratio to eight to one. So you can use this for ratio threshold. You can type in the attack release time. You can use this to put in frequencies in EQs, et cetera, et cetera. Just press VO shift base on the slider type in your value, hit return, and that is a quick way to update the value. I wanna thank Rainer for dropping me a note and reminding me of this. I meant to include this when I answered the question, completely forgot to mention that this works as well. So thank you, Rainer, for contacting me and letting me know that this is how you do it. The other thing to note is if you have a control surface, you can use the sliders on the control surface to adjust these values. This is especially useful if you're using something where you may want to adjust multiple knobs at the same time. With a control surface, you can change the value of two different parameters, three different parameters, however many fingers you can manage to move on faders at the same time simultaneously. Thank you for checking out this episode of Facts and Logic. Hope you found that useful and helpful. If you got any tips you'd love to share with the community, feel free to leave those in the comments below. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe both to the YouTube channel and to the email list found at logic.band. That way you can get a free getting started with Logic course and I can keep you up to date on everything going on over at logic.band. If you'd love to go deeper on any of these topics or anything relating to Logic, VoiceOver, macOS, or GarageBand, you can book yourself some one-on-one -on -one training by visiting logic.band slash training. If you'd love to support what's going on here at logic.band, then visit logic.band slash support where you can make a one-time or subscribe to make an ongoing Patreon-style donation. Links to all of these plus supplemental tutorials and blog posts can be found in the description. And as always, until next time, happy recording.